Apple's peak performance event was just announced and is coming next Tuesday. I've been doing a lot of rumor and leak videos lately of products we're expecting this year, but rather than just speculating on products coming by the end of the year, let's narrow our focus to the next week. And if the rumors are any indication, this event is going to be massive. I'm going to show you everything we're expecting at this event, but feel free to use the chapters to jump to a specific product. All right, so there's a lot of products that we're getting minor performance improvements on, but starting with the most radical redesigns, we've got the MacBook Air. The last MacBook Air we received was in November 2020, complete with an M1 chip that made it so far ahead of its time, most people could buy it and be happy with it. I mean, even I was able to manage editing in 4K graphic design and animation on this thing. But this year we're getting huge improvements to the lineup, including an all new design said to draw inspiration from the current iMac M1 lineup, including vibrant colors, a larger display, possibly white bezels, and yes, a notch. We're also expecting the keyboard to get lighter as part of the redesign as well. I'm still personally hoping for a space gray option with dark bezels, but I mean, at this point, it's really anybody's guess. The MacBook will not have a major port refresh, having at least three USB-C ports and a MagSafe charger like the Pro model. Even the display is expected to get much more vibrant with a new mini LED display. Now, whether that's 120Hz ProMotion, we'll have to wait and see. In terms of performance, we expect the new MacBook Air to adopt the existing M1 Pro and M1 Max chips or potentially a new M2 chip with even better performance. Pricing in this case will hopefully stay the same at $999 and that seems likely given no change to the number of ports or screen size and just overall update to the look, feel, and performance. But that's not the only Mac that we expect to receive updates on next week. We also expect to see the launch of a brand new Mac Mini with what people are calling the biggest update in years. This Mac Mini will have similar performance improvements to the MacBook Air, but more intriguing is the new design that we're expecting. The Mac Mini was already a great design with a full aluminum body, and that has been around for years in striking a resemblance to the Apple TV as well. But this year, it's said to make a significant change to look like this. Complete with a new white design, the Mac Mini would feature a much more compact, minimal design. Which is great because the current Mac Mini is often criticized for being larger than it really needed to be, with a lot of empty space inside. And for a computer that is very much just a computer, the ports are extremely important to have and to be used wisely. The new Mac Mini is said to be coming with four USB-Cs instead of just having two, two USB-As, one Ethernet, and an HDMI output. To the disappointment of many, it's very unlikely that this new design will be having an SD card slot. Overall, it'll be a significant boost to performance, much needed upgrades to the ports, and a design to keep it fresh. And other Macs that have been rumored to come at the event are a brand new 27 inch iMac designed for pro users and complete with a gorgeous space gray design, and possibly a refresh to the MacBook Pro as well. I think it's unlikely that two new models are coming next week as there just haven't been enough leaks out there yet and it's possible they'll be fueled by an even more powerful chip coming later on this year. But aside from Macs, we can expect a lot more products this year, most notably the iPhone SE 3. Probably the most underrated iPhone of all time, the SE is a low-cost entry-level iPhone usually made with old or cheaper materials that are easier for Apple to make, but still boasting performance from the current phones in the lineup. The SE 3 has been rumored to look like pretty much all these concepts, but even still, the most likely situation is that it keeps the same design from the iPhone 8. And while that doesn't seem too exciting, it will have some great specs, including a 4.7 inch screen, A15 Bionic chip, which is the same chip that's used in the iPhone 13, Touch ID, a home button, and pretty much just an iPhone 8 except with just one camera. Now take all of those features and alone they seem sort of like an iPhone 13, but then you take the price of what people think will be just $299 and it becomes incredibly enticing. Other notable improvements include bringing 5G to the SE, which would effectively complete the transition for the iPhone lineup and would make a lot of sense. It's also expected to get a boost in battery life as a result of adopting that A15 chip, possibly even doubling the audio listening time up to 75 hours. A brand new wide angle camera would bring in more light and allow for better dark mode photography, just like on the iPhone 13. The camera may allow for cinematic mode, which would be an amazing offer for an entry level product, but this has yet to be confirmed. And Apple is also expected to be bringing MagSafe to the iPhone SE lineup. And I mean, this would make a lot of sense considering they just launched it on the rest of their devices. 
and it would mean more money spent on accessories, which means more money right in Apple's pocket. So this seems pretty likely. That's it for iPhone, but we also have a brand new iPad Air said to be announced next week. Said to be updated with similar iPad mini-like specs following the same exact design of the current iPad Air. The only possible design change, by the way, is maybe a new color, but again, this is unlikely. While the Pro has Face ID, reports are saying that the iPad Air will continue to use Touch ID through the Siri button, much like the current Air and iPad Mini do now. Other spec changes are that the iPad Air will now support 5G cellular. This makes a lot of sense considering so will the SE. And the iPad will come with an updated processor, bumping it from A14 to A15, which is currently being used in the iPad Mini 6 and the iPhone 13. It is worth noting that even though the Mini runs the same chip as iPhone 13, Apple downclocked it on the iPad Mini to 2.9 GHz instead of 3.2 on the iPhone. It is unclear whether the new iPad Air will also run 2-8% to slower than the iPhone 13, but still it's going to be way updated from the A14 chip. The camera is also said to be improving on the iPad Air with a 12 megapixel front camera, which will also adapt the new center stage feature that both the iPad Pro and the Mini have right now. The rear camera is said to be exactly the same with the possibility of adding flash, as the current model doesn't have that. Pricing is not expected to change, meaning you'll still be paying $599 for 64 gigs or $749 for 256 gigs of storage. Some final updates we're expecting at the peak performance event on March 8th is new iPhone cases and watch bands with spring colors. These photos have been leaked and are likely to be revealed at the event. In terms of a release date, so all of these products are said to be announced next week on Tuesday, March 8th, with pre-orders on some, if not all of these products, on Friday, March 11th, and launches as early as the 18th or the 25th. Let me know which of those products you're most excited for down in the comments below, and which ones you're gonna be picking up if they are really announced at the event. Now, rumor season is in full effect, so if you wanna stay up to date on all things Apple, then now is a good time to hit the subscribe button. While you're down there, remember to hit the like button because it tells YouTube that videos like this don't suck. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.